Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. As you can see, this is a talking head video, but part of today's story has to do with Amazon Prime Day and Newegg's Fantastatech sales. All of that starts today, so I wanted to get this video out as quickly as I could. With that said, I do have some other really interesting stories like the UK pricing of AMD's Ryzen 5000, RX 6000, Intel's new budget CPU, and the RTX 3000 going 7 nanometers? But first, let's get to the deals. And of course, I will have affiliate links to all of these down in the description below. If you wouldn't mind using those, they don't cost you anything more and they help the channel out. Starting things off, if you're interested in Prime Day, of course, there are actually quite a bit more Newegg deals, but there's a ton of great Prime Day deals as well, and if you want to get in on that, you can try Prime for free for 30 days right now. Next, we have CPUs, starting with the 3400G by Ryzen. This is a Ryzen APU that's simply really inexpensive, comes with the GPU as well as the CPU, and it's currently $5 off with $5 more using the promo code. Next, we have an 8-core Ryzen 7 2700X. Yes, this is an older processor, but at the same time, it's only $214 for an 8-core CPU and you get extra savings when you use this promo code. Next, we have the 3950X, and of course, yes, the 5950X is coming out soon, but this is already $70 off, and you get an extra $30 off with the promo code. Next, if you need something a little more gaming-oriented, of course, as I said, Ryzen 5000 is coming soon, but at the same time, this is out now. It's $80 off at Best Buy. And moving on to GPUs, we have the RX 5700 XT. Yes, the 3000 series is out right now, but it really feels like it isn't because pretty much no one can buy it. As of right now, this is $60 off with an extra $10 off when you use this promo code. Next, we have a very impressive WD Black 5 terabyte portable HDD that's only $100. And if you're looking for internal storage, WD also has their blue 6 terabyte desktop HDD for $100. That's 6 terabytes. Now, I will say that this spins at 5400 RPM, so it isn't the fastest HDD, but it's $100. And next up in the M.2 factor, we're moving on to solid state drives. Now, this is SATA 3. So even though it's M.2, it is not an NVMe drive, but still it's one terabyte for only $87.99. If you're looking for more of the typical SATA drive for $175 or $84 off, we have the WD Blue SSD with two terabytes of storage. Next, moving on to Amazon, that we'll kind of be going back and forth. We have a 512 gigabyte M.2, and this is going to be an NVMe drive. It's only $65, but it is also only 512 gigabytes. If you need more, we have a one terabyte drive that's only $135. That's definitely impressive. It really is awesome seeing these drives continuously drop in price. Next, if you want a fairly well-known drive, the Samsung 970 Evo, you know it's going to run fast, you know it's going to work well, $90 for the 500 gigabyte version. And next we have the ASUS ROG Strix. This comes with a 1660 Ti, an i5-9300H, 8GB of DDR4 for $900. This is currently $400 off, definitely not a bad price. Moving on to another laptop that's a bit more but comes with better stuff. We have an i7-9750H and a GTX 1660 Ti for $1,169, and this is $550 off. Next, if you're looking for a pretty great cooling solution, the Hyper 212 right now is $10 off. And moving on, while I cannot guarantee that this particular X470 will definitively support the Ryzen 5000 series, I, I do hope it will, and right now it's just at a great price for $100. If you do want a guarantee, we have the MSI X570A Pro for only $140, as well as a $10 rebate, so it ends up being $130. Moving on, we have memory, and man, his memory plummeted as far as pricing. Thank goodness, because it was really bad there for a good while. 
This set is DDR4-3600. It's a fairly fast memory and it's 32 gigabytes for only $120. Of course, if you're looking for less memory, G-Skill Ripjaw V-Series 16 gigabyte DDR4-3200, so not as fast, but it's only $60. Moving on, uh, I will say that I really don't know too much about this company, but with the fact that it's $91 off for a racing style chair, so it ends up only being $138.99, I'd say that's not too bad. Next up, moving back to GPUs, I actually meant for this to be earlier, but regardless, we have the Azrock Phantom Gaming D3 RX 5600 XT that currently is $40 off and a $20 rebate. So not a bad price. Once again, I would prefer waiting for the RX 6000 series, but before they get to this uh, mid-range GPUs, it's, it's going to be a good while. Next up, we have kind of just more of tech related stuff rather than hardware. This is third gen Echo Dot. And it's only $19. I mean, this is $31 off. So it's one of those things where, of course, if you don't like the idea of Amazon, you know, listening, potentially listening in on your conversations, I fully understand that. But they are pretty interesting. And at $19, it's just you, go ahead and buy it. Seriously. Next, we have a 55 inch 4K Fire TV. Now I will say that I'm not 100% sure that this will be great for a monitor. Most TVs have processing that ends up adding a little bit of lag to gaming, so they aren't great unless they have some kind of gaming mode that essentially turns that off. And of course, if it does have that, write a comment down in the comments below just to let people know that it could be used as a great monitor as well. But if you're just looking for a TV, $300 for a 55 inch 4K smart TV. I don't even know what to say. That's a great price. And it gets even better for a 50 inch. You can save 50 more bucks for $250. Now, with all of those out of the way, let's get to our normal news. First up for today, Ryzen 5000 processors, uh, the pricing for the UK have leaked. As you can see, this is Overclockers UK and personally, as far as I can tell, the pricing is essentially what you would expect based on last gen. You can see right, let's see, it's right here. The 3950X was $749. And then you can see right here, it's 728.99 pounds. That's around the same. It's about 50 pounds less um, for the 5950X and then 549 to 529. So like I said, pricing is about what you would expect given the price jump in US pricing. Moving along, we have a post from Microsoft, and this is really interesting because we've kind of been wondering for a little while now if AMD's Radeon, uh, we, we'd seen some leaks actually suggesting it that their 6000 series will support AV1 hardware acceleration, and apparently it will according to this post. They mention it right here, coming soon, the RX 6000 series. We already know Nvidia's RTX 30 series supports it, as well as the 11th gen, or well, the XE graphics that Intel confirmed not long ago. Speaking of Intel, the company just announced a new CPU that's clearly made to challenge AMD's Ryzen 3300X. Unfortunately, if you know about this processor, you know that it can't be found anywhere. And I will say that I've actually spoken with a contact of mine with AMD, and I do hope to hear something back soon because I am really interested as to why no one can buy this CPU. Either way, what's really interesting about Intel's CPU is that according to them, their price is between $79 and $97, which is seriously impressive. Remember that this is a four core, eight thread CPU with a 4.3 gigahertz boost, which is fairly similar to their older flagship 7700K. You can see it came out in 2017. It's a four core, eight thread CPU. It does have uh, higher frequencies, but at the same time, $339 versus less than $100 in just a few years. That shows just how much better CPU pricing has gotten. Moving on, we have a very interesting post that actually originally comes from DigiTimes, you can see right here, and this is actually translated by Google, but we have a fairly good translation from Retired Engineer, and let's see, it says it right here, this is 
really interesting stuff because according to DigiTimes, it says that NVIDIA's previously launched their RTX 30 series. And as we all know, they launched on Samsung's eight nanometer process, which is effectively like a 10 nanometers plus for Samsung. But according to them, they're gonna be switching to TSMC's seven nanometer process next year. Now, before I get to really discussing it, I will say that Retired Engineer did make it clear that we aren't 100% sure that they meant it would be the RTX 30 series on TSMC 7 nanometers, or that they'll be rolling out a next-gen product on 7 nanometer TSMC. Personally, I will say with the fact that the RTX 3000 series just launched, I highly doubt they would be rolling out their next gen products. What this does sound like is either one of two things. Either we're looking at potentially super cards, so just more powerful RTX 3000 cards, which I believe is the likely scenario, or they're gonna effectively keep the performance the same, but move it over to seven nanometers, perhaps effectively to save them a little bit of money, but at the same time, I really don't think so. Moving an architecture over to a completely different process while keeping exactly the same performance is definitely a tricky thing to do, if not impossible. Either way, at the end of the day, it certainly looks like NVIDIA is likely not done with their super GPUs, that is, if this DigiTimes article is correct. And of course, that ends today's video, but let me know what you think. Do you think NVIDIA is already working on their upgraded RTX 3000 supercards? Personally, I think it's very likely. I mean, they've probably been working on him for a while, but at the same time, let me know what you think down in the comments below. And of course, make sure to check those deals out in the description. And as always, have a great day.